Most people have a belief that you have to be highly intelligent to become an electrical engineer. They believe you must spend years in college or at the university learning tons of math all the way to differential equations, math for electrical engineers. They also believe that you need to be a mastery when it comes to circuits. But in reality, you do not have to go to college to become an electrical engineer. Likewise, you don't need to go to a university to be an engineer in any type of field. Maybe the degree will be a requirement for a certain job, but even if you wanted to start your own business or invent your own product to sell to others, you don't have to go to college. An electrical engineer is an engineer who designs, develops, and oversees the manufacturing or implementation of electrical systems, devices, components, and technology. At the core of electrical engineering, it involves a study and practical application of electricity, electronics, and electromagnetics to solve real world problems. Hello everybody, my name is Joe Dobbini and I'm an electrical engineer and tons and tons of people ask me, how was I able to complete my degree? How hard was it? Or some people might say, I could never become an electrical engineer because I'm not good at math. Some people will say, I cannot be an engineer because I'm not good at school. All of these could be reasonable excuses, but becoming an electrical engineer is an endurance game. It's not a speed run. It takes time to develop skills. It takes time to learn. Those who make it to the end are those who can endure the challenges of electrical engineering. Because you have to understand, the endurance that you go through in the university prepares you for the real world. Because you're going to be tasked with challenges that people have never faced before, humans have never faced before, and you are the minds that the world depends on to create this innovation. So knowing that you're going to carry the, the whole world on your back like a backpack, you better be well prepared moving forward. So what really makes electrical engineering really hard is that it is math heavy and physics heavy. From learning calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, electromagnetics, something that's completely brand new to most people, you're taught about abstract concepts from electrons and all these things that the, the eye can never see, but you're learn to understand all these theories behind all of this. Definitely, if you have a strong math background, getting your electrical engineering degree can be significantly easier than those who don't, but it does not make it easier. There's people who excelled in the math classes and were horrible when it came down to circuits. There are some people who are really good at circuits, but could barely pass their math classes. So if you've made it this far and you're finding value out of this content, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more and it'll help the channel tremendously. And I really do appreciate your support. Let's get back to the video. It was a collective effort that you had to conduct. Electrical engineering is considered one of the hardest degrees is because most people don't have the endurance to keep going when things get hard. A lot of people from my electrical engineering courses switch over to computer science because it got too hard for them. I don't fault them because a lot of them that switched ended up graduating a lot faster than the rest of us. So they're able to move forward and go into the work field maybe a year and a half before everybody else that stayed in electrical engineer and they were able to accumulate that compound interest a year and a half ahead of us as well. So I'm not knocking them for saying they switched over, but for us to complete the degree, you must be able to fight through that grit. So what are the real requirements to become an electrical engineer? One, your work ethic must be at a peak level. Everything will get hard. And when you think the hardness level stops, it just jumps to extreme. Two, you truly have to have interest and some sort of passion because things that are hard, but you are passionate about become easier. But things that are hard and you don't have any passion or interest becomes 10 times harder. So you gotta pick your poison. The third thing is you need to have a problem solving mindset. You must be willing to take specific problems and break it down to the needy and greedy. Things most people don't care about, they just leave it to others to get fixed. You are the person they will come to to come get it fixed. So if you're always curious about maybe why isn't my vacuum working and you want to dissect it and see the inside of it, maybe your radio, if you guys still carry it today, or even if you like taking apart your computer and learning the complexity on how it all works together, those are noticeable signs that you're meant to be an electrical engineer. Four, you need to have time management and grit. With so much work needing to be done as an electrical engineer, if you don't manage your time correctly when it comes to learning everything, you're going to face burnouts. And whenever you face burnout from things that are really tough to do in the first place, it's much harder to get back into it. That's why a lot of people 
who start on January 1st, their New Year's resolution to go to the gym. Going to the gym, if it's a lot to get done for you and you get burnt out, once you leave the gym, you're probably never gonna come back and we'll see you in 2027 in January. So for my electrical engineering class, there was about, when the course first started, there was over 100 of us. When we walked across that stage, there was approximately 15 electrical engineers. At this point, because the class level the, the class amount was so small, almost all of us got our first jobs within the first six months after graduation. But no matter what was your GPA, you making it past that line to graduation, most employers, managers understand how hard that is. Even going through that endurance run and you not quitting puts, puts you in a different placement than most degrees. As an electrical engineer myself, I always pay my due respect to other electrical engineers because I know they had to fight for it. Nothing came easy. And I graduated class of 2022. So at this point, ChatGPT wasn't even noticeable. It wasn't a thing. During this time period, people still use Chad to get help. I don't know if the dynamics are going to change going forward because of artificial intelligence, but when it comes to EE, all the questions and tests were done in person and I don't see that changing anytime soon. And especially if you gotta work on circuitry in real life in a lab, AI can't help you as much. The bottom line is you don't have to be an extreme genius to become an electrical engineer. You need to have a desire and a heart to finish. Most people don't have this, which they fall short and switch degrees or quit altogether. You can always start today and build your own projects, your own electrical engineering project and see if you really enjoyed it. If you really enjoyed it, then you can spend more time. If you have, if maybe you don't know how to start your first project, you can look at my previous video that mesh that teaches you how to build your first electrical engineering project. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Jadabini is out.